He created a scholarly community to gather everybody to um, for the uh, for the establishment of and like, let's talk about uh, whether we sh there, it should be a constitutional monarchy, okay? And then obviously another individual that was very pro monarchy was Yuan Shikai's son. Obviously, he was um, he was a cripple. He was very ambitious, uh, but then he wasn't very nice. So he actually did not get along with Duan or Feng or Wang. So he tried to create his own little army group. And his father was like, okay, why don't you do it? We will do it together. We'll do a little army group. Uh, by the way, Yuan had nine, nine, uh, one concubine and eight and nine, uh, sorry, one wife and nine concubines. And he had a very, very interesting way of managing them. Um, uh, the first one manages two to four. And the fifth one manages six to nine. And when he bought stuff, um, he always bought the same stuff for his wives. So there's no way that you could ever, uh, you could ever fight over anything. It's, just, it's exactly the same. Yeah. He's, he's, Yuan was also the champion of female education. All the major female educational institutions in China was founded by Yuan. So this is another stroke of irony in, um, in, in modern Chinese history. Okay. Another, another irony when you talk about women's studies is that the Empress Dowager actually already, tried, already banned foot binding in 1902, right after the uh, Boxer Rebellion. It's just that nobody was listening to her. So people in villages and cities, were, or maybe not cities, but villages were still binding their daughter's feet. Mostly women binding their daughter's feet. E at the, uh, in defiance of the decree. So again, Again, a very, a very Chinese history is very ironic a lot of times. So when did it finally fade away? The twenties. I think I was talking about this, and then and then this, someone said it was like, you know, what you said is wrong because my grandmother was born in nineteen like twenty, still is still a foot bound. So that's like you know, and that's why I brought this story up. It's just it's just people. Uh, I think by the twenties or. I would say even up to the 30s, depending on the, um, depending on the province. So the more, the deeper in you go, the, the, the longer it took. So Shanghai or, or, or Guangdong or, like, or like, like Hong Kong probably ended at the time that they wanted to end. See, the problem is you could ban foot binding, but you cannot ban men, the Chinese men from liking small feet. So, so... Right, so so you, you so so people would still do it, knowing that there is demand, right? So it's uh this this is one of those things, and um, so obviously everything that Yuan was doing was highly offensive to his main soldiers. He didn't care. He think that he could he could, um, uh, he could really um take control of the country. What's really interesting is, um, he would read newspapers every day. And he would read, and it's like you know, like you know, Britain was when Britain and Japan were both um, uh, very positive and very supportive of him becoming an emperor. One day, one of his daughters or one of his maids went to the uh, went to the uh, went to the streets, bought some nuts to eat, and they wrapped the nuts with a the newspaper. They wrapped the nuts with the newspaper, and then they, it was eating, and then and then the newspaper was out, and then and then Yuan Shikai kind of looked over the newspaper and was like. How come it doesn't read the same way as as uh, as as like today the newspaper that wrote and realized that it was his oldest son Yuan Keding, wanting to be emperor himself, faked the printing of the newspaper for the father. Yeah, and then another another interesting story is that uh, there's one day he was uh, Yuan Shikai was taking an afternoon nap, and um, and one of the maids one of the one of the maids uh, knocked down his favorite um, jade uh, cup that the uh, Korean uh, king gave it to him when he was in Korea in the 1880s. And when he woke up, he was like, what the? Hey, as in trying to order someone to get her killed. Hey, you. And then the maid, very smart lady, was like, oh, I'm so sorry, president. But when you were sleeping, I didn't see you. I saw a dragon. That's why I got scared and knocked down the jade cup. <laughs> Smart lady, but then probably changed the course of history. <laughs> and so there were a lot of different, different kind of um, 
myths or, 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 or superstitious stories. One of them, again, is another one. The Yuan family never lived beyond 60. Nobody, like nobody lived beyond 60. And, and, and so when, it actually went, it became so, it became such a big deal that they got a, like a big feng shui master to look at their estate in Henan and, and they were figuring why. And then one of the things is, and the function master was saying, you know, that's the reason is because you were living together. So you must separate, you must separate. So not living until 60 kept on going. That's why Yuan Shikai had, uh, had like two foster fathers that were his uncles. And so one of the things he was thinking is, if I were the emperor, then I can break the spell. And I think is this. But anyway, so he was thinking about becoming emperor. He had his whole robes uh, designed. He, um, uh, everybody, that the, there, were, there were different groups, including the, the prostitute groups, the, uh, the um, janitors groups, or the, uh, and, and the, uh, all kinds of groups saying that, you know, you should be emperor. You should be emperor. You should be emperor. And then so he was like, okay, I'll be emperor. So by 1916, decided to be emperor. He decided to be emperor. He gave the, and then horrible things happened. That is, one of, one of his, one of his young, very young general, very young general, his name is Cai E. Cai E is um, actually the mentor of Du De. Du De was the, f uh, the, the, the commander of the PLA. Is this is the first commander of the PLA uh, during in 1949 all the way up to his death in 1976. He was actually his mentor, and uh, Li Zhongren is his mentee as well. Li Zhongren was the uh, vice prime minister, uh, pri vice president of Nationalist China. So both sides, his mentees, Cai E. Cai E, um, he, he's he, he uh, and again not coincidentally from Hunan, studied in Japan. Then went back and, and, and during the uh, revolutionary wars, uh, took over uh, Yunnan. As Yuan Shikai was trying to consolidate his power, he took all these uh, strong men into Beijing. Into Beijing, Cai e then was trying to figure a way to leave. So one of the things he see, he got involved with a 15-year-old uh, young singing prostitute. And then most of the time he was just singing and having fun and having fun and singing and fighting with his wife and all so forth. So Yuan Shikai was like, okay, he's not a big deal. And so, legend goes as one night, every uh, uh, Yuan Shikai had, would have people to um, watch over him. Uh, and then he was in the room of Xiao Fengxian, the, the, the young 15-year-old prostitute. Um, and then his, his clothes kind of just hanging on the window, okay? And then, and it's okay, so you, uh, Tsai must be there. Tsai then put on Xiao Fengxian, uh, the 15-year-old the, the, the girl's clothes, and fled to Tianjin and then, and then took the boat and walked away to Yunnan and fought against uh, Yuan from Yunnan. Um, it's called Hu Guo, to, to saving my country war against Yuan. Yuan obviously then got his main guys to put them down, but then the main guys were all against him. Feng was in, Tian, uh, was in Nanjing. Duan was like, I'm sick. I, I'm um, I, I'm ill. I'm not I'm not around because mostly because he was he was he was very offended. He was like, if it's Republican times, if Yuan's gone, maybe I'll be next president. But if in imperial times, then Yuan then his son, and I uh, rather I, I can work for Yuan, but I cannot work for Yuan's son. And so he's like, okay, I'm ill. There's nothing I can do. Feng then was in was in Nanjing, uh, with the other provinces, uh, sent a telegraph to 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 Yuan Shikai and said, this is a bad idea. Becoming president, uh, emperor is a bad idea. And so in, at, that, at that state, he was only emperor for 82 days. And then he abdicated. And I was like, okay, I cannot be emperor. He wanted to be president, but it's too late. Nobody is going to listen to him. And then he died uh, in June. Yuan Shikai died in June. And what's really ironic, again, another ironic case in, in, in Chinese history, um, he, he was fat. He was pretty fat. He was a pretty chubby guy, right? If you look at, look at this. It was summer. So his, his, his body became bloated. And so his military uniform did not fit for his funeral. So the only thing that, the only clothes that, that fit him were the emperor robes that he designed for himself. So at the end of the day, he actually wore the emperor robes to be buried. But 
so after Yuan Shikai died, that was the era. And I'm ending it here. That's the era of uh, the, the warlords in China. And from then on, China was just in shambles and tribulations for many, many years. And so thus, I'm ending the uh, late Qing series on this note. Thank you.